We thank you for every breath, for each beat of our heart, for the unique emotions and thoughts that pass through our minds because these are some of your many gifts to us. We praise you as we wake and when we sleep, when we're alone in our places of rest or at work in our places of assigned service. As we do our service to you in obedience. Father, for this day, as for each day before it and after it, we realize it's a gift from you, from your abundance and extended to us through your loving, magnificent grace. We honor you this day with the praise from our voices and with the silent praise as we hear the proclamation of your precious word. Father, may our hearts be as one as we, your children, come before you with hearts filled with joy. And because of Jesus, we can pray in his name. Amen. Are you glad to be here this morning? Isn't it a blessing to be in God's house? We're going to sing a song that says why we're glad. He has made us glad. Would you stand together? And we're going to practice a little bit of Baptist clapping. And we're going to clap on this song, He Has Made Me Glad. Now, the roof's not going to fall in. Lightning's not going to strike you if you clap in praise to the Lord. So let's sing, He Has Made Me Glad.
right now there's some people here that you need to greet. Some people that you haven't seen since last week. Some people maybe you haven't seen in a while. If you're our guest, we want you to know you're especially welcome. There's some cards we have for you. We ask if you would fill it out and give us some information about yourself so we can get to know you. Parkdale folks, go and greet someone you don't know or someone you haven't seen and tell them Jesus loves them this morning.
glad that Jesus is fighting your battles for you. Amen. He's already defeated the enemy. We need to remind ourselves that He is a mighty warrior. He is one who is able to fight all those battles for us. This song says that mighty warrior, acknowledging who He is, that He is fighting those battles. Oh 
anguish which once was bright as morn. What thou, my Lord, hast suffered was all for sinners' gain. But thine the deadly pain Lo, here I fall, my Savior Tis I deserve thy place Look on me with thy favor Assist me with thy grace Sacred head, O oh, hands and feet, O oh, love incarnate, broken for me, O oh, sacred head, O oh, hands and feet. Set me free, O oh, sacred head. What language shall I borrow to thank thee, dearest friend, for this? dying sorrow thy pity without end oh make me thine forever and should I fainting be Lord let me never never outlive my sacred head, O oh, hands and feet, O oh, love incarnate, broken for me, O oh, sacred head, O oh, hands and feet, Set me free, O oh, sacred head, O oh, hands and feet, O oh, love incarnate, broken for me, O oh, sacred head. and feet who bought my pardon who set me free oh sacred
What a song, amen? Isn't God wonderful? You love him? Amen. Lord is the best thing that has ever happened in my life. And I believe that God wants to do something special in this service today. You know, I went back up for my glasses and I didn't get them. And so, are they back there? Okay, they're going to bring them to me. I thought, well, where did my glasses go? And uh, I want you to thank you, sir. (laughs) I appreciate it. I have to see. Thought that never happened to me, but it did. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And we'll begin reading in verse 8. Now, how many of you like darkness? Now tell the truth. How many of you like it to be totally dark? Okay, when you're sleeping, do you like lights on? You know, I used to work at a job that... uh, I'd work all night and try to sleep during the day. And you know, I would, when I would uh, be doing that, I would try everything I could to keep out the light. I would uh, put blankets on the windows and blankets on the windows and blankets on the windows, stuff blankets at the crack of the door. You remember, anybody ever done that? Tried to get rid of the light, but the light just keeps shining, doesn't it? Isn't that it, the way the Lord is? You can't get rid of the Lord if he's in your heart and in your life. If he's present, you can't live in the darkness anymore. There's always going to be sunshine. There's always going to be light because the Son of God lives in your life. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that marvelous? You know, we have a privilege to let our light so shine. And folks, listen, somebody asked me what I was doing the other day, and I said, I'm just shining. (laughs) Amen? I'm just shining for the Lord. I'm just shining. I Let this little light shine. Amen? Get excited about what God is doing in your life and what God wants to do in your life. We cannot go back to the dark. You know, I guess the darkest place I've ever been is in a cave. Y'all ever been in a cave? It gets dark, doesn't it? I mean, you can't even see your finger in front of you. You can't even see your hand in front of you. It is totally dark. And I believe that there's a lot of people that maybe even come to church and maybe even sit in a pew and and, and maybe even go and visiting someday, they're still living in darkness. They're still living in that darkness and, and they cannot see the love of God and they cannot see the joy of God. My wife and I was talking last night. She was doing her uh, Sunday school lesson and she says, Ronnie, I, I've got a quote I'm gonna use of yours tomorrow. And I said, oh, uh, what, what was that? Uh, what is that quote? And she says, you know, in Ecclesiastes, we're supposed to be happy, we're supposed to be joyful, and we're supposed to be uh, the bright stars. And she says, you know, this time of the year, she was already getting ready to go back to work. My wife, the last few years, didn't, really want to go back to work. You know, she wanted to retire and maybe retire early. And she'd say, oh, it's just two more weeks and I have to go back to work. Oh, and I'd say, hey, there's a lot of people that don't have jobs. You get to go back to work. Why don't you start looking, change that direction and say what I get to do. 
and be excited about what you can do. See, that's a lot of Christians. Well, we can't do this anymore. We can't do that. I want to tell you, you can do a lot of things in the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be happy about it. And you can rejoice in it. And you don't have to have anything to uh, take or anything to uh, uh, get rid of your inhibitions because you have the Lord in your life and he will thrill your soul because he's shining in you. Well, let's look at this passage of Scripture. If you remember in this passage of Scripture, last week we talked about how people to, needed to be like Jesus, Christians. And Paul was saying, you need to be imitators of God. Remember that? Now he's going a step further in this passage of Scripture. He says, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now you are in the light, the Lord walk in as children of light. You are in the light of the Lord. Amen? How many of you are excited about that? I, he, he, Jesus said, I am the light. You know, in the beginning, he said, let there be light, and it was good, and light showed up. Men were taken out of darkness. Jesus came into the world and he came as a babe and he came to pay the price and become the light of the world. And, the, and all his job was is to be the light of the world and bring peace and forgiveness to all generations. Amen? Amen. When we look at this passage of Scripture, we are in the Lord. If I am in the Lord, is there light coming out? There's got to be, right? There's got to be some excitement. There's got to be, because it's not in myself that I stand here today. It is in the Lord. And if you see anything good in me, it's not me. It's God coming out of me. I am no good. <laughs> Some of you say, I already know. <laughs> I am nothing without God. But if there's anything that is noble, anything that is just, anything that is truthful, it is all because the Lord lives in my heart. He's present. Now, he says to them, you're in darkness. Now, what is darkness? I've explained what darkness was in a physical way. I want to explain to you the darkness, the spirit of darkness, evil. You know, how many of you have ever think evil of anybody? Don't raise your hand. I mean, how many of us know what evil is? I, I want to tell you, darkness to me is the kingdom of the devil. Do you hear that? It's the devil's kingdom, the darkness. And the darkness, there's sin. And anything that is unrighteous, anything that is not righteous is in the darkness. Is that true or not true? Absolutely. Anything that is, that is uh, unrighteous is in the kingdom of the devil. Do you believe that? Do you understand that? So the Lord tells me that I'm going to be light and I'm going to be righteous. So I cannot have any place in my heart for the devil. Amen? He goes on and says that in this passage of Scripture. Walk as children in the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Now, what is righteousness? Right living. Y'all can talk to me if y'all want to. I, I, I don't mind. Righteousness is right living. Now, what is right living? Right living is patterning my life the way God wants me to live. 
You see, I don't say, hey, listen, what I want to do today, what does God want me to do today? How can God use me today? How can I be righteous, right with God? Amen? See, I want to be right with God in my life. I want my light to shine that I'm right with God and people may see Jesus living in me. And then he says another fruit is not just righteousness, but goodness. I, I have a hard time being mean. Some, pe some people, my wife even says, you need to be a little more mean. She says, meaner. And I said, you know, that's not in my lifestyle. It's not me. I mean, you know, if I can't be good, I don't want to be mean. How many of you know some mean people? Said next to you, I understand. I mean, folks, listen. People, you know, when, when we get mean, and when we say, well, I'm just going to tell them what I think. Have you ever heard somebody say that? I'm just going to set this straight. I'm going, boy, I'm going someplace else. Because somebody's already getting upset, right? That's okay to set things straight. It's okay to, to question things. It's okay to even question God. Did you know that? But you got to question him in goodness. Do you hear me? See, if I question God, I want to know everything about what, God, what is the intention here? Amen? God, what do you want to do in this situation? God, how do you want to work this out? So I'm not questioning of myself, but I'm questioning it for the glory of God. Amen? See, goodness has got to come out of our lives. People will know we are Christians by our love, by our goodness. That we want to go out to do good instead of hurt people, hurt situations, and hurt relationships. We got to be good. Make sure our intentions, that's, that's what I think it means to be the light of the world, is to make our intentions good righteous and then the last word he said was truth amen folks we've got to be truthful if we're going to let our light shine we're going to be truthful truthful with our feelings truthful with our love truthful with our commitment to God and stand true in Jesus Christ. Have you ever, and we talked about truth, truthfulness not too long ago, but have you ever told a lie and felt bad about it? Okay, I'm the only one. You know, you, you ever told a lie and you, you felt bad about it, you just felt, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. You know what that is? That's the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart and your life. Amen? And that's the Holy Spirit saying, hey, listen, you need to be good. And being good is make sure that we're truthful to each other. Amen? And folks, when I say I love every one of you, I'm truthful about that. I love you with a godly love. With a love that God gives from above. Amen? Amen? You got to be truthful. And then notice what else he says in this passage of Scripture. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. See, not what I think. Not what the pastor thinks. Not what uh, some group thinks. But being truthful and acceptable unto God. That's, I quoted that scripture last week from Romans 12, 1 and 2. That we present our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. 
right? Folks, we have to be, what does God accept? Now, I want to tell you something. What God accepts and what we accept are two different things. Is that, is that not true? I mean, you know, uh, what our kids, I, I can give my kids, for example. How, how many of you know that our society has changed completely? You know, I mean, you can watch TV. You can watch TV, and what was shown uh, 20, uh, what's shown now wouldn't have been shown 20 years ago. I remember that, that what was said, even in movies, would not have been uh, said and shown 20 years ago. Our society has, a ch has changed, and that's because we've accepted the society in which we are in, and we say that's not so bad, everybody else is doing it. Is that true or not true? Is that letting your light shine? Absolutely not. Because that's not acceptable to God. It may be acceptable politically. It may be acceptable uh, uh, to our society. It might be acceptable to our family. But if it's not acceptable to God, it is wrong. And we have to come to the point in our lives that we realize that, that we understand that. You know, God's not going to accept us in darkness. We can't fellowship with God in darkness. See, people say uh, in First uh, John, he says, uh, you know, you say you are in the Lord. You say that you have fellowship and you walk in darkness. You're a liar. He said, those two don't go hand in hand. You either love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and completely sowed out to him, or you're in darkness. Doesn't the Bible say we cannot serve two masters? We can't serve two masters. We'll hate one and, and love the other one. We cannot serve both darkness and light. Because that is not acceptable unto God. Amen? Am I communicating with y'all today? Y'all kind of look blank. Like I feel today. You know, just kind of like. You know? Folks, listen. What is acceptable to God? What is, does God want you to do? Then let's go further. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. All right, what does that mean? It means that anything that looks like the devil or looks like darkness, we need to get away from. We don't need to entertain it in our life. We talked about that a little bit last week. We don't need to entertain that. And then it says we need to reprove them. What does the word reprove mean? That means we've got to correct that wrongness in those people's life. And we've got to say, that is wrong, that is in darkness, and we are in the light. Amen? See, I, I, I really don't know whether we know the difference between light and dark. Sometimes I, I think that we think that we know the difference between light and dark. But anything that is, that is not for the Lord is in darkness. And we've got to realize that. If we're not doing something for the Lord, that is darkness. I believe that we live in the darkness by what we don't do. We don't reprove. We don't stand up. You know what's wrong with our nation today? We have not stand, stood up as a group of people and Christians and say, for me and my house, we will serve God. And say, that is wrong. This is wrong. And reprove it. We accept it in our lives. And when we accept it in our lives, it becomes a part of us 
And then we say, everybody else is doing it. I'm not doing anything different. We've got to reprove it. We've got to tell people it's wrong. Bring sinners to Jesus. Amen? And then he says, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. He said, we can't even sin in secret. Right? How many of you sin and say, well, nobody ever will find out about that? God already knows it. Amen? And maybe I won't find out about your sin. I really don't want to find out about your sin. I really don't. But folks, listen. So many times... We think that we can do things that are not right and we can live in the darkness and, and God's okay with it. No, he says, don't even entertain anything in secret. Amen? You know, folks, listen, we gotta be different. We gotta act different. Now, we're getting to the meat of the sermon now. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever doeth make manifest in light. See, what am I supposed to do? Shine! That's all! Amen? Shine! I'm supposed to shine. Jesus is supposed to come out of my life and people are going to say, hey, listen, look at Ronnie shining. Look at Jerry shining. They're just shining for Jesus. You know, God wants us to shine. That's all he wants us to do. That's all he expects us to do is let him come out of us and just shine. See, it's not me shining. It's the Lord shining. Amen? And now here's the invitation. I love this last verse. This 14th verse, I love it. It's a great verse. He says here, wherefore he saith, and he's uh, quoting Isaiah 61, but he says, wherefore be, uh, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest. He says, here's the invitation. I want you to wake up. I want y'all to wake up this morning. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Folks, wake up. You know, there's people that are dying and going to hell and we're not awake. Now he's, uh, he's talking to the lost person. He says, awake out of your sleep. Awake out of your sleep. How many of you like to wake up? Well, some of you don't, right? But not waking up could be a problem. Right? So I, I believe everybody in here likes to wake up. We like to wake up, right? I like to wake up. I, I, in fact, I get up and my wife says, you're not regular, Ronnie. Because I, I get up and I go, "Woo!" you know, it's another morning. And I, I go, I, I don't lay in bed. You know, they have that snooze alarm. You, you know about the snooze alarm. How many of you use your snooze alarm? I think that's the biggest sin ever is using the snooze alarm. What is the snooze alarm for? Here's what they tell us it's for. A snooze alarm is for this. Lay there until you feel better to get up. No, a snooze alarm is go back to sleep and then the snooze button goes off, the alarm goes off and you go, oh no. And then you hit it again. And you hit it again. And you hit it again. And then you're 15 minutes late for work. Because you hit that snooze alarm. I think that is the biggest sin in the world. Get up. You're not going to lay there and wait. I'm going to lay here and wake up. Who are you kidding? <laughs> you're going to lay there and wake up? I've never heard of such a thing. You know? You lay there and you say, I'm going back to sleep. I got another five minutes. I don't know how long, how long do they go off? Uh, five minutes, about five minutes? You can set it, whatever. But folks, listen. You know, in that situation, he says for us to wake up. 
to shine. He says, wake up, arise. Get up, arise. You know, it's time the church arise and do something. It's time that the church wakes up and sees our world that is lost and undone and we wake up and we have a burden for lost people. It's time for us to wake up and not see the convenience of the world but see the inconvenience and folks reach out to those people that are hurting. We need to become ambassadors for Christ. Jerry and I were talking this week and you know it's just how many of you were excited to come to church? Man it's a privilege to come into this building. Isn't it? It's a privilege to hear God speak. It's a privilege to worship God. It's a privilege to read God's word. It's time that we wake up and we understand what God wants to do in our lives. And that we begin to praise God. And that we begin to be happy in Jesus. And that we begin to be truthful. That we begin to forgive one another. And that we begin to worship together. Arise. When the people outside these walls see the church worshiping Christ because as they come out, they're happy, they're serving. See, we depart this place to serve. Amen? And when people see that happening, do you think they're going to join us? Absolutely. Because they want to be part of something like that. But if we go out of here belly aching and still asleep and still in the darkness, we're going to stay in the dark. You hear that? We've got to wake up. Take a big breath. And say, God, what do you want us to do today? How do you want us to serve? All God wants you to do is shine. And let the righteousness of the Lord flow out of your life. Our Father... I thank you for your word and how your word has touched our hearts. And Lord, how we're made to understand that we need to be about your business. And Lord, that we need to shine. And Lord, I just pray, God, as we go to this invitation, Lord, it's time that we as Christians begin to shine by just rededicating our lives. Saying, Lord, I know you saved my soul, but God, I want you to give me that joy of my salvation, that peace, that love, that unspeakable joy. Lord, I just pray, God, that people might come to you that that way today. Maybe there's those that need to join this congregation today. God, I pray that they may come. And then, Lord, I pray, God, for those that have just uh, never given their heart to you. I pray that they'll come and receive you as their personal Savior. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do in this invitation We give it into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand together, as God is speaking to your heart and your life, as Jerry sings through this hymn of invitation, God spoke into your heart, will you do what God wants you to do? Right now, as you come. Of darkness, we are given. Right now, you do. Want you to do hope for all the dark. If you need me to pray for you, you say, Brother Ronnie, I'm having a hard time. I just need you to pray for me. That you come right now. Them, and he died to say.
might Go and tell the children They are precious in His sight Carry the light Carry the light Go and preach the gospel Till there is no more night In the name of Jesus Christ I thank you for your attention today. You may be seated. Uh, there's a few things I want to tell you about. Uh, our building, uh, we have signed a contract on a building 6606 Weber, and we've signed a contract on that building and the piece of property next to it. Uh, that's exciting, isn't it? How many of you are excited about that? Amen. It's still going to be real easy for everybody to get to, you know, and you say, well, they're going to move away from the church, you know, and where are they going to move to? And, and God's just dropped this in our lap. And I believe it's going to work out. Uh, we're working on that. We're doing the inspections now on that. So you start praying more about it, that God will work things out. Uh, and I know, I, I have to tell you this, I know that some of you have been here for years and years and years and it's like losing your house. And I know that. And I'm sorry that's happened. And I pray God will just give you strength in that. And that God will just bless you and it's about him it's not about us anymore amen and that we just release it to the lord so don't you think for one minute we're not sensitive to that we're not sensitive that you're leaving your house and we are and uh, i want you to know that from the bottom of my heart okay so i'm excited i hope you're excited um we'll be uh you say well when we'll be in it i don't know but we're hoping by the first of the year we may be there okay let's just say that all right all right y'all have any questions about it thank y'all very much let's bow for our prayer and the offering our heavenly father lord we thank you for this day we thank you that we do live in a country that we can come and come together to worship you Lord, we just thank you for the messages that we heard this morning in Sunday school and in this, this service. Pray that you'd help us to use the wisdom in our hearts that we would do the things that would please you. Lord, we know that every perfect gift comes from you. And we thank you, Lord, for this uh, new building that we're working to get. We just pray that you'd give us guidance and wisdom as we do it. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd be with the offering that we're taking the money that's contributed, that we might use it in a way that would please you. These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
couple of quick announcements before we dismiss. Uh, remember, we had Vacation Bible School, a very successful Vacation Bible School a few weeks ago. This afternoon at 4.30, we need each of you who could possibly be here to come meet with us. We're going to go out and visit each of those families. So if, we, if everybody here were to come, we would just probably visit one home apiece. But we're going to meet up here this afternoon at 4.30 and go and visit in each of those homes that we can get into of people who came to Vacation Bible School and welcome them. And do one important thing, and that ties into the second announcement. We're going to remind them about the back-to-school school supplies and backpacks. Next Sunday morning, during this worship hour, we're going to be giving away almost 90 backpacks of school supplies. Isn't that great? And you're going to get to see that, and we're going to have all those families here. So we're going to go and invite them, remind them about the backpacks, and then next week, you come and watch and see as the, has those children receive those backpacks. What a joy it is to be able to put into the hands of those children the supplies they need for school for this coming year. And you've been a part of that. We're taking donations for that. If you want to donate to that, uh, feel free to do that. And then next Sunday, come. So this afternoon at 4.30, we're going to go visit them. And then next Sunday, we're going to come and see them receive those backpacks. Isn't that exciting? So you come, and if, even if you don't feel comfortable going to visit by yourself, don't worry. We'll have someone to go with you so you won't have to be by yourself. But the more we can have, the better. It'll be a great time. Let's stand together. We're going to sing one more time the chorus, He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. God bless you. We'll see you this afternoon at 4.30 as we go visit.